We're at the Muleshoe Heritage Foundation in the Santa Fe Depot, and we're talking with a longtime resident of Muleshoe, Ruby Green. And Ruby has done many things in this community. Uh, one of them has been a longtime member of the Muleshoe Rebecca's. And uh, the Rebecca's have disbanded recently. Is that right, Ruby? True. After how many years of service? 66. 66. No, will be 66 in October. In October. And so um, many, many years ago, you had a member that was called Grandma Snyder. And what was her name? Sarah Bell. Sarah Bell Snyder. And uh, she took on herself to go out and sell a lot of advertising for this uh card table that we have sitting in front of us and how old was she at that time 74 hang on hang on a minute i have our minute book oh my goodness from what year 45 1945 and um so um Sarah Bell Snyder, past Noble Grand, 74. And now what is uh, Noble Grand? What does that mean? Well, that'd be the same as a president. Uh She was the head of the, and this chapter, what was the number of it? 114. Rebecca, 114. And normally you'd have about how many uh, members? We've had as many as 140. Is that right? At one time? One time. And she, though, single-handedly sold door-to-door in the business section of Milshu ads for this card table. Now, the deal was that you would get how many card tables for the Rebecca's? I thought we were to get 16, but our minute said 24. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so how much was each ad? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know, but how much did she bring in? She brought in three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Three hundred and twenty. Uh huh. And how many ads did she sell? All of these. I don't know. I have never counted them. I think there's about forty-eight. Uh huh. And their business is here in Milshu. In what year? Fifty. In 1950, and I think it was in August. That's a hot month to hit the pavement, wasn't it? I would think so, yes. I sure would. And do you remember uh, when she was doing this? We didn't know it until she brought the money. Oh, she did it all on her own? This was all a surprise to us. I bet. And she brought the money in Uh and told us what we were going to get. And we used these tables for years. And now tell me, how much did the Milshu Rebecca Lodge actually get from her uh, selling all of this? According to the minutes, we got $100. $100. And in 1950, that was a lot of money. <laughs> it would still be a lot of money as far as that's concerned. But but this day and age, no, it wouldn't be no money. Even the $325 wouldn't be no money. But no, we got uh, $100. From her now, tell me about this lady, Mrs. Grandma Snyder. She um, did she come to Muleshoe just uh, right shortly before she did this, or was she a real pioneer? I think that she they came here in nineteen and eight. Nineteen oh eight. So she was a pioneer. Uh, she was a pioneer. Wasn't she? I would think so. And what was her husband's name? I don't know. You don't have any idea. I never knew him. Uh-huh. So he was and, long gone. And uh, so uh, she was a Rebecca for many years? Until she died. And what year did she die? 57. Did she have a family? She had two boys and a girl. And who were they? Frank, uh, Vernice and Frank and Mary. And I believe Mary became Miss Major Wood. Right. Now, what I recall about Mrs. Wood's history is she was either the first girl born in Bailey County or in Milshu, one or the other. And so probably shortly after 1908 when they came here, I would think. I would, well, I think it probably was in 1908 when she was born. I'm not sure about that. Oh, uh-huh. So, but and so she uh, probably uh, Mary Wood was born uh, later in the year that the Snyders came. Probably so. Probably well, so. I've always heard that the Snyder family was a true pioneer family of the Milshu area. I always thought they were too. And uh, now y- you're a, a sort of a pioneer, aren't you? Nearly. Uh, what year did you come here? 
1922. 1922. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Rebecca's. What were some of the other things that while you were a member, how many years were you a member? I'm still a member. And how many? 60, will be 66 in October. So you were a charter member. I was. A, I'm the only charter member left. Is that right? How many charter members were there? I got the book. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I don't. I'm going to have to count them. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. There was ten by card and thirteen by initiation. Now, what does card mean? They were transferred from another lodge. Uh -huh. Now, tell me the charter members' names. Okay, uh, Faye Lambert, Ruby Green, Fern Davis, Dally Snyder, Anna Mae Province, Sylvia Wildman, Lois West, J.W. Bowen, George S. Province, Willis Bartley, C.W. Whalen, Paul Lambert, and J.J. Gross. Now, that, that, was, that, that was a... Those were initiated. Yes. Okay, the ones by card was Velma Howell, Alice Snyder, Elsie Chitwood, Pearl Greer, Opal Williams, Callie Williams, Sarah Bell Snyder, Frank Snyder, Edie Chitwood, and Bernice Garth. Bernice Garth. Now, tell me about, there's a lot of Snyders in there. Frank and Allie were members previously. Uh -huh. Dally was initiated. Dally Snyder and George Province took the initiation degree, and the rest of us sat around. Now, uh, what about Allie Snyder? How was she related to Grandma? She was a daughter-in-law. A daughter-in-law. And she who was, was her? Frank's, Frank's wife. And the other one? Uh, Dally was Vernice's wife. I see. So. Now, is there any family members left? I know Bonnie Woods uh, Jackson, of course, is a granddaughter in Amarillo. Uh, Joy, Frank and Allie's daughter. They had two children, Charles and Joy. And Charles is gone, and Joy lives at Tucum, Carey. I see. That's the only one that I definitely know. Uh, Dally and Vernice had one, and her name was Verna Ray. I don't know anything about what has happened to her. Uh -huh. Well, Mary had two children, a son and a daughter. One was a little older than I, and one was a year younger, the son was. Now, let's see if we can uh, read some of these names uh, that Mrs. Grandma Snyder um, so adds to here um, in Milshu in 1950, summertime, August, when it was hot. Uh, read this side of it. Let me tell you, Milshu Funeral Home is the only, and it was a florist at that time. Uh -huh. That is one of two that's left. Is that right? Okay. Milshu Funeral Home, of course, now Alice. Yes. Beauvel Motor, Connell Oil. Lambert Cleaners, Milshu Funeral Home, Hornbrook Drilling, Hetherington Lumber, E.R. Hart & Company, Milshu Implement, Milshu Elevator, Weedabush & Childers, Milshu Motor on this side. And over here, uh, Gulf, let's see, service station. Yeah, this is Gulf. On this one is property of Milshi Rebecca's number 114. Is that right? Mm -hmm. and, and you all really use these cart tables. Oh, this is all we had to use. For years. Uh -huh. We ate off of them. Yeah, yeah. And put we done everything. Uh -huh. This is Cashway Grocery and Market. And uh, the, by the way, the telephone number looks like it's 109. <laughs> this one's 232. Johnson and... Oh, go ahead. This one's 297J. Yes. Johnson and Pool Hardware and D.H. Sneed Supply, Lane Pumps, and Ferguson Tractors, King Brothers uh, Grain and Seed Company, Quality Seed, Shoe Liquefied Gas Company, Firestone Bass, Firestone Store. So that would le uh, later be changed to Harvey Bass Appliance, don't you think? I would think so, yes. Milshoe Cafe. Now, wonder who owned that. I don't say. So what does that say right there? No, office called Bailey County. Office. Oldest cafe oh. in Bailey County. Oldest cafe in Bailey County. <laughs> it was probably on Main Street, don't think, do you think? I would probably think so, yes. Hicks Tractor Company, Mule Shoe Jewelry. That probably was the Schuster's. What do you think about that? Uh, probably so. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. 
uh, Jack Schuster's mother, Sally. Uh, Gilbreth Feed and Seed Company, that would be Rufus uh, Gilbreth. Uh, that is still here, but it's not Gil- McCormick's. Yes, uh, right. And St. Clair's Department Store and Ray Griffiths Elevator, Cobbs. This is Harper Appliance, the Yellow Jacket. Uh-huh. I never went. I never went to school on Meal Shoe Day. Meal Shoe Canning Company. They used to get canned beans and tomatoes. Uh, Over on the east side of town, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, see, you know, I can't remember where it was exactly at. Well, it probably was around East Fifth Street and maybe the. Oh, there's nothing there anymore. To I think I think there's a little bit of slab on the ground cement, maybe, and that's about all. And it's probably in the, oh, say, 500 block. I would say that it'd be that far down, probably. So. What was the man who ran it? Can you remember his name? Uh, that's okay. That's fine. I can't. It's left me. Okay, this is S.E. Cone and Milshu Locker. It's Pearson Meat now. And uh, Dameron Drug, uh-huh. Arnold Morris, uh, Valley. And uh, Wallace Theater. Valley and Palace. Oh, Palace, Palace, pardon me. And they were both on Main Street. And uh, that was the Moeller family and Hertha Walker, their daughter. Th- that's Johnson Nix. And that was Buck Johnson's dad. Uh, um, yes, Buck Johnson's daddy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I can't. Fred Johnson. Yes. Lane's shop. Yeah. Lawnmowers. Uh, that was Chet Lane. Okay. <laughs> now was he? Um, Phyllis Beaver's, Beaver's, Beaver's daddy. daddy. Yeah. Okay. That's Chet Lane. And does it say lawnmowers and what else, Gil Robert? Lawnmowers, ground, and adjusting. Lawsmar, lawnmowers, ground, and adjusting. <laughs> Went over in the corner is Evans Oil. Uh-huh. And I can see Lambert Plumbing. That was Faye and, Sh- and Paul Lambert. And uh, Wilson and Sanders Lumber. Western Drug. Malone Milk. We used to get, we used to have a milk company here. Gerald's Cafe. Now, I think Gerald's Cafe was in, down, in downtown. Wasn't that Gerald Prebo? Yes. Mm-hmm. And Shady Rest, that was uh, where Wilson's wound up uh, running it. On 84, out at the edge, west edge of Milshoe. Now, wasn't Shady Rest uh, sort of a little neighborhood grocery store? And wasn't it run by all the Wilson's daddy? I don't know. I, th- I think so. Uh, the, after Bay and his wife started running it, I don't remember before then. Uh-huh. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, at one time, uh, Freeman, can't think of his name, Evelyn and what was his name, Freeman, run it. That was Hugh Freeman's brother and his wife. So, but... Yeah. Uh, did we miss any, any of We them? haven't got the bottom line. Oh, okay. Uh, Charles Leno. Mm-hmm. And that was where the tables came from. Oh, I see. And Crossroads Cafe, that was there. That was Butch and Rain Baker for years. And that was uh, not right at the Crossroads, but about a half a block off where the parking lot of Milshoe State is it's today. Where Milshoe State City. And then uh, Texas Machinery Company. I don't remember that one at all. Texas Machinery. Uh-huh. And Dyer Hardware, that's been going along. C.W. Goss Service Station. That was Carol Goss. Yeah. And Evans Oil over there in the corner. Uh-huh. So well, it, it's it, been a, They've been a fun thing through the years. And, and what a memory, all of these. Uh, now, you said um, there were two businesses, not by the same name, Milshu Floor, I mean, Milshu, uh, no. uh, L- I mean, what does it say, Milshu Funeral, Funeral Home and Florist. It was Henry Reed. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
they they had florists down there. Uh-huh. Mary Reed was yes. the florist yes. right behind the funeral home. And then what was the other one that's still here? The Milshi Locker. Well, and also Gilbert Feed and Seed yeah. is McCormick. Uh huh. It's the only three that's still in existence, under, and they're all under another name. Sure. And, and of course, uh, new ownership. Well, um, I guess that Milshu Locker was Jeanette Wagnon's husband, though, wasn't it? Yes. Uh-huh. Vance yes. Wagnon. Yes. And, you know, uh, Jeanette is going to be 99 August the 1st. Isn't that something? Well, I knew she was getting on up in years. Uh-huh. That, that's amazing. At my age, I can tell that they're pretty close to, you know, a certain age. Uh-huh. So. And, and so now, what was your maiden name? Did you come here before you married? Oh, yeah. I was a Smith. And, and who were your parents? Tom and Callie Smith. And what did they do? They farmed. They were farmers. My daddy was commissioner in the 40s. Uh-huh. So, and uh, what part of uh, Bailey County did you all live in? West the west part. So now, what precinct was that? Two? two. Precinct two. And what about, uh, did you have brothers and sisters? I have two sisters and one brother, and they're all gone. Uh-huh. And they came here also as children? Yes. But you didn't go to school here at all? No. Uh-huh. no. My brother went to school here, but <clears throat> we three girls never went to school a meal she a day. So where were you born? Hale County. In Hale County. And did your family come here from Hale County? Yes. So what did it look like when you all came here in 1922? Barren land. There was only two houses between us and Milshu. We, we were about 10 miles west, and there was two houses. And what were those houses? Well, where E.W. Bass lived, there was a two-story house, and there was rooms downstairs and upstairs. And uh, then uh, where Melvin Seymour's place is at, uh-huh. that place was there. That was only two. Do you remember who lived in them? No. No. Johnson's lived uh, in this two-story house at one time, but the name, the, their name was Johnson. And now, was that Red and Randy's no. family? No. No, no relation. No, relation. No, mm-hmm. no. That was years. That was years before them. Okay. So. Well, who were some of the people here in 1922 when the Smiths came here? There was some people by the name of Holmes that was two miles north of us, and they lived in the same type of house. Uh-huh. And that was about it. Uh-huh. There was nobody. And so what? The ranch house out here uh-huh. was there. but The Milshi Ranch house. But you couldn't, you had to go, come in town and then go back out there. There was no road coming in from the west to the ranch house. Is that right? The road was the, out here by Puckett Corner. That was the road to Clovis. And it went west and wound around. By was west. it paved? No. 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 It wound around through by West Camp and went into Farwell on the south side. Uh-huh. And, and was put in. have you ever seen a drier year? This no. In my lifetime. Uh-huh. What was the wettest time that you... 1941, boy, you knew that immediately. Uh, what happened in 1941, Ruby Smith Green? Oh, it rained and rained and rained until you couldn't even get in the field. So, but we made a fairly good, fairly good crop. Everything was dry land then. Uh-huh. Everything was no irrigation of any type. Well, no, there was some irrigation. In fact, uh, on my daddy's place was one among the first irrigation wells in the county. Probably the third or fourth one in Bailey County, uh-huh. and it it was a pit pump. A pit pump, uh huh. And I thought that was the deepest hole. It was probably eight or ten foot, but it was deep. Uh-huh. And then he had a stationary engine that, that it tunneled down, and it was belt driven. The pump was belt driven, and that big old stationary engine set in a lower place. And that's the way we pumped our water. Uh-huh. Now, uh, what about for the house? We had a house well, a windmill. You had a house well. And uh, did you have electricity and telephones? No, no, no. So what kind of light did you have at night? Kerosene. Kerosene lamps. And no telephones? No telephone. No radios? No radio. No TV? No TV. <laughs> no electronics of any kind. Uh-huh. 
And I guess your mother had a rub board. We all had a rub board. I've washed on a rub board. And uh, so she had three children, was that? Four children. Now, uh, who did you marry? Lusky Green. And so how did you meet him? They moved here in 29. And they came from where? Oklahoma. And so a lot of people came from Oklahoma, didn't they? Oh, yeah. uh, Bailey County started settling up pretty much after 25. I see. By 30 and 30. In our Dust Bowl days, there was a lot of people here. Uh And that was in the 30s. Now, tell us about the Dust Bowl. What was it really like uh, personally? You haven't seen no dirt now. Even our bad sandstorms as bad as the Dust Bowl. We'd get up of a morning, be pretty sunshine. Now, we called them Kansas Dusters. And you'd look in the north, and the horizon would be dirty looking. And you keep watching it, it just keep moving both ways. And then in two or three hours, it just cover us up. Mm-hmm. And it's blowed for two days and two nights. Straight. And so you didn't have air conditioners, of course, of any type in your cars or your homes or any place. No, no. And what about fans? No, no. You don't even, we didn't even know what a fan was. Yeah, this kind. (laughs) A hand fan. And so now, uh, Ruby, what about your family, your children? How many children do you have? I have five. And who are they and where do they live today? Crispin and June. And Tommy and Felicia and Noreen and J.C. all live here. Uh-huh. Charles and Gail live in Midland, and Bertha is here and in Lubbock. Uh-huh. Right now, she's in Lubbock. How many grandchildren do you have? Nine biological and four step. Yeah. Don't ask any further than that. I can't count them. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got... Uh, I have to count them this way to count them. <laughs> you've got more than that. Great, great grandkids. How wonderful. Got, so, now, I may can count them, uh, let's see, five... I may just have five. No, no, I don't know how many Dorena's got. I've got five biological. Uh-huh. But now, that, right? Yes. And that's something. Now, tell me about, um, like, would you come to town every day? No. no, we got to come to town twice a year. Twice a year. We came to town just before school started and bought stuff for school, and at Christmas time. Now, what would you buy for school? What kind of things? We bought material for Mama make our clothes. Uh-huh. And or, now, notebook? No, we had tablets uh-huh. and with lead pencils. And now, uh, where would you buy the material? Well, really, I don't remember anything about that. Because uh-huh. she was doing it, and you were the young girl. Uh, I was just a young girl. Uh-huh. Uh, Usually we got to go to Clovis once a year, and that may have been where we And were. what would you go in to Clovis? Well, we finally had a, got a car. Uh, what year did you get the car? It was in the 20s sometime. The 20s. I don't remember just when. Now, wh- when you moved here, what did you move in? Uh, a wagon. Uh-huh. With a covered wagon. A yeah, covered wagon. And so how long did it take you to come from how many miles did you all move? It's from Hale Center, probably 70. Uh-huh. How long? I don't know. Did it seem long to you as a child? Probably not. Uh-huh. I was too little. Because also, that's the way everybody traveled, do you think? I think so, uh-huh. yes. And so now, uh, what about um, your mother? Did she ever work outside the home? No, she just she never did work away from home. But, but she worked at home? All the time. She lived to be how old? 100. One hundred, one month, and uh, two days old, and uh, she was Callie Smith. Now, uh, have you ever worked outside the home? Oh yes. Where have you worked? <laughs> All over this country. Well, where are some of the places? That well, you I, I, well, the last place I worked right now is at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh-huh. I fill in down there when she's out. Uh-huh. And I worked at Littlefield at American Cotton Growers for six years. But actually, I was a painter and a paper hanger I see. for 30 years. Uh-huh. And that was, that was the reason I said I worked all over. Uh-huh. Right. So I'd go from one job to another. 
Now, I think one of the older, uh, would you call it, mercantile stores in Milshoe that possibly your mother bought material was M.P. Smith. Uh, I remember the name of M.P. Smith, yeah, uh probably. And now, a grocery store, did you come to the grocery store just twice? Uh No. Now, Mama would come into town. We had cows, and we milked cows and made butter, and she would bring it in probably once a week. But us kids never come in. Uh-huh. But we churned butter. She would sell it. Yes, yes. Who did she sell it to? She had her out here in town. And did she? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. People that would mold it, and she'd bring it into town. And Now, you said we would mold it. Explain what you mean. We churned it in a churn uh-huh. and then molded it in a mold. And it, that was by hand that you churned it? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Did you have chickens? Yes. I guess everybody had chickens, didn't they? We had chickens and cows and hogs and horses. And a garden? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. So really, most everything that you needed to eat was right there on your farm? Sure. Uh-huh. We killed our hogs. We killed her the coldest day of the year, they killed hogs. Why that? Well... The meat would help to preserve the meat better. I see. Then maybe two or three different ones would kill a beef and just use part of it. Uh-huh. And would hang it on the windmill and on some uh, stretchers and lay it down, cut some meat off, and put it back up. And yeah, you hang it on the windmill. Yeah. Uh-huh. We had to do that to keep the varmints off of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we had a milk trough in our... Our well pumped water, and it went through this milk trough, and uh, that keep our milk from souring. That uh-huh. we kept our cream in there. Was it a good life? Oh yeah, I really think we didn't know any different. Uh-huh. It was everybody was in the same boat we were. And we were all happy. Now, what if somebody got sick? Well, you just worked it out at home. Uh-huh. No, we did have a doctor here. Did you? Do you remember his name? Matthews. Dr. Matthews, uh-huh. Back of the drugstore. Behind the drugstore. Now, wh- what was the name of the drugstore? I don't remember. Uh-huh. And so was the drugstore downtown on Main Street? Yeah, it, it was where they, uh, where Lenses had their jewelry. On the corner of what is now Avenue B and Main it's Street. Kind of Western drug. Uh-huh, yes. So, but I don't remember. I can't remember who was there. Leno was in there the first one that I can back the first one I can remember uh-huh. Julian Lennon. Julian Lennon was the pharmacist yes. Uh-huh. yes and so uh, would you say that the doctor's office was sort of in what later became the hotel or was the hotel actually there? no I think that uh, the office was back in one of the rooms at the back part of the store of the drug store uh-huh. now there was a hotel here or maybe two 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 hotels, Skeptons. I don't remember what that other one was called. Uh-huh. But that other one, which actually you entered on Avenue B, right behind uh, Lindsay's, or the drugstore, Western Drug, later, or before Lindsay's, I guess, um, what Mrs. Major Wood uh, operated that and lived uh, there upstairs in the hotel. Right? That That's right. Uh-huh. That's where I... I sh- she may have died there. I don't remember. I don't remember when she did die. I don't. No, I can't remember that either. Now, um, it is so nice that the Rebecca's gave this to the Milshoe Heritage Foundation. Do you have any other card tables that have been given to uh, organizations here in town? There's one at the Senior Center. At the, at the Onita Wagner Senior right. Citizen Center. Right. And then I have one for sentimental reasons. Uh-huh. So... Well, now, actually, the other card tables that was left, Joy wanted them. And that was for granddaughter. Yes. Uh-huh. So they went and to Joy and took them, yeah, uh-huh. Carrie. Uh-huh. Well, that must have been some lady. Now, what was her full name? Sarah Bell Snyder. Sarah Bell Snyder. But she was known by everybody as Grandma Snyder. That's all I ever knew her by is Grandma. Is that right? Uh-huh. We all called her Grandma. What kind of a lady was she like? She was probably, oh, she'd crowd five foot, and 
she was a wiry little old lady. Just, you just loved her to death. Uh -huh. She just a, she had a personality that everybody loved her. And everybody wanted to donate when she knocked on their door. Uh -huh. well, she did this. I don't know how long it took her, but she walked and did all of this. She walked to all of the merchants. I believe there's 48 on here in 1950, and she was 74 at the time. And uh, they got these card tape. No, no, no. She was no. 74 in 45. Oh, she was, she was. She was 79. She was 70. She was nearly 80 then when she sold these ads to mule shoe merchants. And now we have this card table. Never would she would have ever thought that uh, so many years passed when she did this project by herself and surprised her fellow Rebecca members that uh, this would still be used and on display both here in Milshu at the Onita Wagner Senior Citizen Center and also the Milshu Heritage Foundation. Thank you, Ruby Green, for sharing with us. Well, I've, I've enjoyed my years as Rebecca. And this is memories of my years of Rebecca. There's been a lot of fun in doing all of this through the years. We've done a lot of different things. Of course, you know, Rebecca started the Thanksgiving dinner that now the Jenny Slippers does. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of stuff through the years and had fun doing it. And you're an active Jenny Slipper still. True, yeah, true. That's good. Thank you for your service to our community.